Welcome back. I'm touring in 2024. I am coming to Perth from January 19th. I've got a show every single night in Perth from Jan 19 to January the 28th. Come and see me. Those are happening very soon. Those are filling up. They are smaller shows. Get your tickets now, loosebeers.com. After that, I'm in Melbourne in April from the 9th of April until the 8th, 9th, 20th. 21st of April, so a bunch of shows in Melbourne. Then uh, I've got Sydney on the 10th of May uh, and the 11th of May. I've got more dates coming, more cities coming. Don't worry. If you're worried about where I'm coming to you, they will be on sale very soon and they'll be announced soon. Loosebeers.com. Get your tickets now. I'm starting in Perth in January. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 318 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and we are back into it, man. Uh, Last episode, thank you so much for all of the comments, all of the feedback, all of the beautiful, uh, heartfelt messages I've been getting. Uh, This year is really, really, really about reclaiming momentum and bouncing back from all of this stuff that... uh, that, that has happened over the last few years. And if that's you, I, I hope that for you and uh, I'm going to be leading by example. I'm dropping uh, vlogs multiple times a week on the second channel, Lutu, and it's all about that. So I'm not going uh, to, you know, keep this as like some self-development podcast or anything. I'll talk a little bit about it and, and kind of keep you updated on on where I'm going and what's happening. But if you, if you really enjoyed the more serious side, the more... Uh, uh, the the more self-development side. I'm doing a lot of that over on the vlog channel and it is going to be funny because, you know, I'm going to be doing comedy and traveling the country and all that kind of stuff with my tour. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, you know, that's that's over there and it's there's heaps of it there and uh, a new episode came out on Thursday and uh, yeah, I think I'm really happy with, with how that's going and I would love for you to check it out. So check that out, Lutu, on YouTube. Um, now, the Epstein Logs just got released uh, five minutes before I hit record. So there's 2,000 pages. I don't know anything about it, okay? This is coming out on Sunday or earlier than that if you're a Patreon supporter, a little plug there. But it just came out, and and I, I'm, almost, I'm almost bummed, all right? Obviously, it's really good, but I've really been enjoying the wild speculation that's been going on. That's more fun than the truth, if we're being honest, you know, right? That's the whole reason why QAnon was so fun. Because, you know, who is he? What's going on? A million people. Now we kind of know, oh, well, most of that's bullshit and, you know, whatever, right? Boring, all right? Speculation is where it's at. I'm really enjoying everyone for no reason going, Jimmy Kimmel was on the planes. Jimmy Kimmel wasn't on the Epstein flight logs, all right? But... It's very funny to imagine that he was. I like to imagine that Jimmy Kimmel was doing rehearsal for his show on the plane. You know? Oh, and today we've got another 11-year-old girl. (laughs) You know, like he's like uh, every guest that he's interviewing is just describing horrific things they've done. And he's there pretending to laugh and have fun like he's supposed to. Maybe that's practice. Maybe that's how he got so good at doing the Tonight Show was because he would, he would, you know, interview people who were doing horrific things like human trafficking and he would pretend to like them. Thinking, you know, if I can like Jeffrey Epstein, I can like this boring B-list celebrity talking about her album that she didn't write, you know? If I can if I can pretend Ghislaine Maxwell has a few banger jokes, I can pretend that Billie Eilish is funny. And that I'm that I'm having a if I can if I can hold a conversation with a with an eleven year old Congolese girl, I can find uh, I can I can find some common ground between, you know, the Stranger Things cast. <laughs> it would be good practice. You know what? That makes a lot of sense. I reckon he was on the plane. No, I don't think he was on the plane, all right? But I do think it would be very funny to find his his name there. I wonder if anyone is going to be on the plane that we that we didn't already know about. I feel like there's not going to be many surprises. I think maybe what will be surprising is how often <laughs> some you know like, we all know Bill Clinton's going to be there a lot, right? But but I don't think we're prepared 
for how many times he was on there, you know? Like, I fly a lot for Virgin. I fly a lot, but I still am not allowed into the frequent flyers lounge. I feel like if uh, if Epstein's plane was Virgin Airlines, which in many ways it is, <laughs> if it, you know what? In many ways, it's more deserving of the title Virgin Airlines than Virgin Airlines. All right. Jeez, how has Richard Branson gotten away with calling his whole thing Virgin? All right. Richard Branson's going to be the only old billionaire flying virgins around that people are really happy with. Like, people think he's really cool. I love Virgin Airlines. They're better than Jetstar. They're much more functioning than Tiger. And they're not as expensive as Qantas. Does Qantas feel racist to you or just me? I don't know what it is about Qantas, but it... But whenever I've taken a Qantas flight, I, I get in the tube and I just feel an overwhelming disgust for minorities. Not within me, w without me, you know? I just, I just really feel like if a Cantonese woman was to get on the plane, people would go, ugh. Maybe not audibly, but definitely up there in their heads. You know, they they they, they go. They would make the noise in their head, and then they would remind their body not to follow through. <laughs> anyway, I feel like we know Bill Clinton's been on the plane a lot. We don't know how often, and we're going to be very somehow very surprised, even though we know it's heaps. You know what I saw that was really funny? Because obviously it's in my world, in your world, you probably know a lot more than me. But in my world right now, it's all about to come out and they've just released it and people are reading it, right? So all I've seen is is like basically a rehash and a refresh of what we already know. And I didn't know this, right? Okay, bad enough for Bill Clinton to be flying there all the time on the Lolita Express. Epstein liked him so much he had a painting of him in a dress in his house. Bad, all right? Not good. Glad she didn't become the president. However, you know what's worse than Bill going there all the time on the plane? I didn't know this. Prince Andrew has a pilot's license and he would fly his helicopter there. <laughs> He, he fucking, he liked going there so much that he didn't want to rely on someone else's plane. He got his fucking pilot's license to fly over to the island by himself. Bro, I bet that even at that, that circle of depraved, powerful billionaire pedophile freaks, even they were like, Prince Andrew's weird. <laughs> Even they were like he was the he was the the weird friend that you didn't know how to uninvite. You know, like they were like, oh, come over to the island. There's heaps of underage girls. Invite Prince Andrew. We know he likes them. He goes over to the island. He gets there and he's he's even too weird for the reptilian freaks to enjoy his company. And they were like, oh, maybe don't let him on the plane next time. And then he doesn't get invited on the plane the next time. And he goes, hey, Jeff, can I come round? And Jeff's like, oh, sorry, man, would love to have you, but the plane is full. You know, we just did a big smuggle run in Somalia. We can't, we can't fit you on the plane as well. It's full, if you know what I mean. And he's like, oh, no worries, next time. The next time rolls around, hey, Ghislaine, can I jump on the plane? You know when that, when that mate you don't really want in the friend group just keeps probing different members of the friend group trying to get invited like trying to find the weakest link who will buckle and then let him let him come you know and then and then everyone will be like oh why did you invite prince andrew i don't know man I, he asked me i don't know why he asked me why would he ask you it's my house it's my island he should ask me Oh, well, he knows I'm going and he knows we're friends and he asked me and I didn't know how to say no. Oh, well, you ruined it. Now Prince Andrew's coming to the island. Thanks. 
You know, you know, he was doing those ones. Asking Bill Clinton, can I come to the island? And Bill's like, yeah, man. I'm always coming on that island. Does your wife know? She hates me. <laughs> but, but she'll never get divorced from me because I know some things about her. Right? You know, it was that situation where, where they slowly phased him out of the friend group. Dude, imagine getting phased out by the other pedos. <laughs> you know, you're a member of the royal family. You've got limitless wealth. You're connected to all of these things. You can help probably more than even the billionaires can with their depraved activities. And you're not invited because you're too weird. This, come on, we can't, we can't have him here, man. He's strange. You know, he's, he's inbred as, and you can tell. He's really weird. He keeps talking about his cousins. All right. I don't care about his cousins. They're of age. Yuck. He keeps coming around. He wears his medals. Why does he have, why does he even have medals? All right. He's a member of the Royal family. What war did he fight in? What heroic act did he, it's even, you know what? Even if he did commit heroic acts, and even if he was a war hero, it would be weird to wear the medals. You know, you wear your medals to like a parade or a march or a speech. You don't wear them to hang out on an island. I'm in my board shorts. He's wearing medals. It's weird. He never makes eye contact when he's looking at you. And you know what else is strange? He keeps telling everyone that he doesn't sweat, but he does. I know he sweats because the, it's sunny here and I, I can see him perspiring. I, he's wet. And you know what else? I can smell him. He smells like shepherd's pie and inbred deficiencies. It's not good. It's weird. I don't like him around. And I'm a billionaire pedophile. Don't invite him to the next one. And then they all got together in their little circle and they all decide, don't invite him. Okay. If he messages you, tell him to ask Jeff. Well, I don't want to say no to him. I feel, I feel, me it's not mean. He's weird. Do you like hanging out with him? No, I don't. He's weird. Well, then don't. You need to learn boundaries, man. You need to learn about, you need to respect yourself. Can you bring that nine-year-old with the blonde hair in? You need to learn boundaries. You need to respect yourself. Not that one, she, she cries, the other one. You need to learn boundaries. All right, so if he messages you, you don't even have, don't even say no. Just say, ask Jeff. And Jeff will say, no, he's really good at that. I know that he tells everyone else not to say no but that's that's different he, he's good at saying no and he's good at training people to never say no. it's different it's just don't invite just don't even say just tell him to ask jeff it's not rude and then they all banded together and they were all like look andrew there's you can't use the plane anymore and then they made up some lie about the runway. And also, like, we don't... The, the the plane that we do use, it just doesn't have any room for you. And also, you're a royal. You attract too much attention. You know how it is with attention, right? I think you just... I think it would make more sense if you just never get on this plane. Uh, and also, we're not going to allow any other planes in. It's just... I know it's an admin thing. And I know you love coming to the island. And, and, and yeah, of course we like you. But it's just... It just doesn't work. I'm sorry... You know, maybe we can hang out another time. And and Prince Andrew is so inbred and stupid. He does his feelings don't even get hurt. All he hears is a problem that he could solve. And he goes, No worries. Uh, I totally understand. And they don't hear from him for like eighteen months. And I'm like, geez, this island's this island is so fun without pasty Andrew. You know, he was always complaining about getting sunburn, but he would never wear sunscreen. Because he he said that that his paws couldn't handle it because of his sweating problem that he clearly doesn't have. Because I've seen him sweat and I've smelled it. You know he keeps giving high fives. To, he keeps trying to do high fives like the, and he and he keeps talking about Eiffel Towers. It's that's like an internet joke. I don't want to do that in real life. 
You know, that's weird. I know, I know what we're doing is, but he's even weirder, you know? And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden someone gets a text. Oh, speak of the devil, bloody. No, not the actual devil. I know we've been talking to him a little bit, you know, with our rituals and stuff. I meant like Prince Ant. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I know I shouldn't talk about Satan too much because he, he does show up every now and then and, and, and he's and he's a good guy as well. And, you know, we've he's he's a he's a good trader. We've made a few trades and and and, that, and he's a big reason why we even have this beautiful island. You know what? Don't forget about it. I wasn't talking about Satan. I was talking about Prince Andrew, he just texts me. And then and then and then Prince Andrew just goes, Hey guys, how's the island? I heard you guys are all there. I saw your Instagram story. Who the fuck's posting on their Instagram? Delete it! I don't care that it's close friends. You can't put that up. You know Zuckerberg comes to these things. If he sees that you're here and he wasn't invited, of course he can see it. He owns Instagram. Oh, they bought it years ago. He's not just Facebook. Of course he can see what you're putting on your close friends, even though he's not on your close friends. He owns the app. He invented the feature. Why do you, do you think he wouldn't backdoor it? You've seen how much he loves the backdoor here. For God's sake. Can you believe that Tom Hanks was posting on his close friend's story about this? Who's on his close friends? Oh, just uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Well, we've invited him, but he doesn't want to come. He said he's busy. He does a Tonight Show five days a week. Well, let's just spread a rumor that he was here and then, you know, maybe he'll come because he'll, he, he, he feels like his reputation is damaged anyway. He might as well have some fun, you know? I mean, that's, that's why Kevin Spacey's here. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll text him later. Anyway, 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 Prince Andrew texts me and uh, he, he, he said he, he wants to come over soon. Well, I, I'll just tell him that the, the plane's already here. Like, we can't send the plane back. Because it, it needs to, you know, everyone needs to get on the plane to leave. If we send the plane back and something happens, we'll be stranded. He'll understand. I know we've been blowing him off, but if we, if we keep blowing him off, he'll give up. Well, why do I have to say no? Why doesn't Jeff tell him to stop? Well, I understand Jeff's under a lot of pressure and the people are looking into him, but he'll he'll pay off the pe He's been helping with a, with a lot of the CIA stuff, hasn't he? He'll be fine. Ghislaine knows what she's doing. Jeff should say no. I don't know anything about it. I just text him. I just text him that the plane, the plane's here, so we can't send the plane for him. He knows he can't get another plane here. We, he understands that. Oh, hang on. He's writing. He's writing. Oh my god. Oh my god. He just, he just said, "Look to the skies." What does this guy think he's Batman? And then off in the distance, you know, some 11 year old boys like, look, a helicopter. <laughs> and you just hear, dun, 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 dun. is that fucking Prince Andrew? Is he piloting his own helicopter? Who gave him the coordinates? He figured it out himself. He's been here that many times. He's got it memorized. He learned how to fly a hell. Who the fuck taught him how to fly a helicopter? Oh, fuck. Now he's going to get here on his own. Now we can't even tell him that he can't get on the plane. Either. Do we have a helipad? Quick, destroy it. You know, I feel like that's how it went down. And I'm sure that once, once people go through the 2000 page document, it'll basically say what I've just said. That's how it went down. I imagine, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're back. Spearhead Sundays is back, baby. Um, all right. What else did I wanted to do? I had the I had the um, the most fucked day yesterday, and I've actually vlogged the whole thing, so you can watch this all play out. But I won't tell you the whole thing. But basically, I went to go uh, and get my ears sucked. Because I have, like, my ears and my sinuses are really prone to getting clogged. My whole skull uh, is fucked in so many different ways that I am 
continually finding out about. And it's amazing, right? I still need to get my nose fixed, but my ears get clogged. Every couple of years, my ears just fill up and they close and I go deaf, right? And I've done everything in my life. I've gone to the, the doctor and had them flush it out with the saline solution. Doesn't help me at all. Just really hurts. Nothing really comes out. The doctor's confused. I've done ear drops. Doesn't really help. Just kind of melts it and sends it back in deep into my brain. I've tried cotton buds. That makes it so much worse. Don't do that. I've done the ear candle thing. That's fucking hippie hoo-ha bullshit that never worked for anyone. It just feels like it should work. That's bullshit. What else have I done? I've tried blasting water in the shower. I've done everything. None of it's worked until one day back in like, back when I was 23, like seven years ago, I stumbled across this business called Clear Ears who do ear vacuuming. And what they do is they grab like a tiny little needle, right? A tiny, tiny little tube and they attach it to like a really powerful vacuum and they stick that in your eardrum along with a little camera and they just take everything out. Uh, and I did that for the first time when I was 23 and dude, no shit. I left the clear ears clinic and I was like, I felt like I was having an autistic meltdown because the world was too loud because my ears were so blocked that my brain turned my hearing up but I was not actually deaf at all. They were just as if I was wearing earplugs. I left the clinic and I was like, oh my God, I had no idea that the wind made noise when it went through the trees. <laughs> you know those, you know that that those videos of the colorblind glasses of people putting them on and crying? I experienced that in real life. You know when they put the hearing aids in? And like some 14 year old girl hears their mum's voice for the first time and becomes overwhelmed and starts crying. Some 50 year old guy who's, who's been deaf his whole life finally gets to hear his son say, I love you dad. And he just cries like he never has before in his life. I felt like that leaving the clear ears clinic, finding out that the wind made noise when it went through the trees. I got home and I was like, oh, can someone turn the volume down on the fridge? It's too loud. The fridge is too noisy. You know, I, I had just been that deaf for that long that I completely did not realize that a lot of things in my life made a lot more noise than I thought they did. Right? So I'm at that stage now, right before when I, when I got the first ear suck, where I'm just deaf, but not only am I deaf, I feel it in my in my ear. Like I go, it, I, I don't know what it is. It's like having a really blocked nose. You know, when you're kind of sick and, and it makes you want to scrunch your eyes up. I feel that in my ears. So I book an appointment, right? And the first one I did seven years ago was in Moorabbin because I was living around there, right? This one... I found out there's one in Frankston. I go, beauty, jump onto the website. I plug in Frankston and I book my appointment. I pay or, or I go to pay and uh, they go, oh, you need to create an account. I go, oh, I don't want to create an account. I want a fucking appointment. All right, I'll tell you my name when I get there. Why do you have to create an account with fucking everything to buy anything? I tried to buy a fucking t-shirt online the other day to swim in because I got sunburned and they're like, you need to create an account. Why? I'm going to give you my name and my address. I don't want to log in, all right? Check out as guest. Why the fuck, when I go to the butcher, do they go, do you, are you a member? No, I'm buying mints, all right? I don't want to be a member of your club with no benefits. The fucking pet food store, I have to become a member because it's actually a lot cheaper, which just makes me feel like I'm being punished for not giving you my fucking mobile number. I don't want to. Don't want to know ya. Not my mate. You know, and then I give them all fake phone numbers. And then I can't remember the fucking number that I gave them when I go back another time. And they go, what's your number? And I go, well, I don't know what the number I gave you is. I know what mine is, but I don't know what I told you. 
And then you do sign up and you get fucking emails from a different business. Because they didn't fucking keep their data secure. They leaked it. And now all of a sudden, some fucking guy called Prajit is trying to take your life savings from you. I don't want to be a member. I don't want an account. What do you want my phone number for? I'm not your friend. Anyway, guys, losespears.com slash gigglies. Put your email uh, into the website and your city, and I will send you an email when I'm on the way to you. Loosebeers.com slash gigglies. Sign up to the exclusive fan club. But you know what I mean? I'm not going to fucking email you all the time and i'm not going to contact you unless i have something to say like imagine if you fucking put your email in there and i sent you an email three times a week like shut the fuck up you sell you sell candles you don't have five things to say a week i don't want to know anyway right what was i saying oh i go to get my big suck which i only seem to need max once every three to five years it's not something i need to do regularly it's just it's one at one point it gets so bad that i go deaf and i go i'll get my suck and then i'm good for another three years minimum i don't need an account all right you see someone once every three years, are you going to remember their name? If they send you a text, you're going to be like, who the fuck is that? I don't need an account. Anyway, they go, well, you can't check out as a guest. I go, oh, great. I'll log in then, or I'll create an account. I go to create an account. They go, this email address is already read. Oh, good. Now I can't create an account because I already did this fucking seven years ago. What's my password? I can't remember. Now I got to reset. Oh, well, you got to check your phone number for it's my old phone number. Oh, I can't get the code. Well, great. We'll we'll send one to your email address. I get the fucking code. I put it in. I change my email. I change my password to something that I'll inevitably forget five years from now. I log into it, and then now I'm shitty, and now I'm fucking over it. So I'm like, oh, okay, good, whatever, book it. I pay for it 140 fucking dollars. Can't really afford it, but really need it. It's my health, and I don't disregard my health anymore. We learned that lesson. I fucking pay for it. It sends me an email, and, I, and it goes, you're at this hospital. And I go, I know that hospital. That's the one in Frankston, because I Googled it. And it told me clear is, is at this hospital in Frankston. Great. I'll be there. I plugged it into, into my little notebook because I don't use my phone anymore because we're trying to get that screen time down below six hours a day. By the way, crushing it, we're at about two and a half hours. I've never used my phone this little. Amazing. But there are some downsides which we'll get into. Right? So then I forget about it because that was like two weeks ago. Booked it, logged into the fucking account I don't even want to have, paid for it. It's at the hospital, whatever. Fast forward to yesterday. My appointment is at some weird time, 6.40 p.m. <clears throat> in Frankston in the city. Frankston City. Yes, it's the city. All right. We, got a, we, got a, we have a burger shop and a frozen yogurt joint. That's the city. Sorry. That's the criteria. We have a burger joint. We have a frozen yogurt place. We've got a shopping center and we have homeless people who get ushered away by the police because the city doesn't want to be associated with poor people. That's a city. If you have homeless people sitting on the ground and no one abuses them, that's a suburb. If you have a homeless people and the, the police treat them like shit and move them on, even though they have nowhere to go, that's a city. That's the difference. That's why Los Angeles isn't a city, it's hell. <clears throat> anyway. I go, I'm like, all right, well, it's 6.40. I want to swim because I'm swimming 100 times this year. I did one swim on Monday. I thought, perfect, I'll swim at the pool in Frankston. Love it, all right? So I'm going to spend the whole day in Frankston. I'm going to start at the library and I'm going to write a bunch of real talks because I need to do those. 
starting next week. And then I'll go for a swim. I'll have some food. I'll come back to the library. The library shuts at seven. So by the time the library starts to close, I'll leave. I'll do my appointment and then I'll come home. And while I'm there, I'll renew my passport. So much admin done, so much creativity and a swim. What a productive day. So I thought, right? I go in, I've got it all written down on my fucking Hobonichi Techo planner. People keep, ask, people keep asking me what my planner is. And I said it many times. I got a Hobonichi Techo ASICS planner. But you guys are so fucking stupid that you won't remember it unless I say it in a funny and slightly racist Japanese accent. So now every time I talk about my Hobonichi Techo ASICS planner, I'm going to say it like that. So I wrote down my schedule in my Hobonichi Techo ASICS planner. And I went out into, into Frankston, risked my life in the wilderness with the junkies and the animals and the frozen yogurt place, which is very nice. That's the only ice I buy in Frankston, the frozen kind. I get there, first red flag for my fuck day, library closed for renovations. What are they renovating? No one in this suburb can read. What are they going to put in there? Something the community could use? A dental clinic? I don't know. Whatever. I'm sure I'll love it when they're done. But for now, it inconveniences me in the short term, so I'm upset. So I go, whatever. I can't do that. I'll just check the next thing on my to-do list, which I've written down in my Hobonichi Techo A6 planner. And I go, all right. It's the fucking... Passport. I need to go and renew my passport. It expired 10 years ago. Let's go get it renewed. I got a big tour coming up. I want to do UK shows this year if I can organize them. Let's do it. I go to Australia Post and I am met with what you are always met with at the Australia Post store, which is just the worst service that you've ever received in your fucking life. Ever. You'll never receive a more rude, disinterested, and aloof person than a lady behind an Australia Post counter. I don't think I've ever walked into any business ever and been met with more derision than I am met with at every Australia Post. And I've been to many across the country, and they are all exactly the same. Scratch that. That's wrong. There was one Australia Post in the country. And it was where I used to live. And it was in Ormond. And it was the best fucking Australia Post in the world. There were two guys, an Asian dude and a white guy. And the Asian guy was maybe probably gay. He was the type of gay like B.D. Wong in Law and Order where... You find out he's gay and you, you act, you, you're surprised, but then you go, actually, that makes perfect sense. Of course he is. And then the other guy was a white guy who looked like uh, the, the balding dude with curly hair from, uh, from the Three Stooges. What's his name? I think it's Curly. <laughs> and they were the nicest, loveliest dudes. And every week I would come in, with like a hundred posters for a while during the death threats crowdfund thing, a hundred posters, 30 T like just the most big fuck job before I worked out proper fulfillment, I would go to the post office and they would have to do it by hand and they were lovely and they did it every time. And then once they were closed. So I went to uh, the, another place I think in Bentley and this woman, I had three posters to posters to send. And she looked at me like I asked, if I could fuck her dog in front of her for $2. Like just, who the fuck do you think I am? You disgust me, get out of my face. But I was just there as a customer asking the bitch to do her fucking job. And I get there and I'm like, hey, I wanna do a passport. And the woman looks at the floor and goes, uh-huh. And I'm like, do you, do you do that here? Like, do I, 
I don't know how this works. I'm asking you. And she's like, yeah, we do. Like that was the end of the comment. Like, I don't know what it is about Australia Post, but I am so thankful to Amazon for just fucking coming in and undercutting their business and showing them how a fucking shipping system and fulfillment system should work. All right? And yes, I understand that they essentially use slave labor and abuse their employees. But you know what? If some of those people used to work for Australia Post, I'd say that they deserve it. <laughs> because of how they've treated me, the real victim, a guy who wants some average, at least, customer service. I go in to take the passport photos. And uh, so she gets the camera out and she gets me to stand in front of the, the white background for the passport photos. But here's the thing. I'm six foot eight. This woman is about five foot one, literally. Okay. She pulls the camera out. She points it at my chest. And we both look at each other like, what the fuck are we going to do? The white background's not tall enough. So I, I had to get down on my hands and knees and I'm kneeling, kneeling up. And I still come up to about halfway up to the fucking photo thing. I'm kneeling on the floor. She's taking a photo. I laugh. She doesn't even smile. That's funny. You don't think that's like, you don't think that's even a little bit novel that a giant guy came in to get passport photos and had to get on his knees to take it? That's funny. But there's something about Australia Post that saps the joy out of every single person that lives there. Other than the posties, the guys that put the, it's such a dichotomy, man. I've never experienced such a contrast. Like one time I went to LA and I went to Skid Row and then I went to uh, the, the shopping strip, Beverly Hills or whatever it's called. And I saw Rolls Royces where, where 20 minutes away, I saw people doing heroin in between their toes on the street. That was a contrast, but the, but he, but there is no bigger contrast between the friendly smile and attitude and life outlook of a postman versus the the women behind the counter at Australia Post who really, if they if their looks could speak, would say, "I I wish you nothing but pain and illness." So I do that. And uh, I get my photos done and, I, and she prints them out for me. And uh, God, I look different to my old passport photo. The new photo compared to the old photo. Who is that bloke? I'm glad. I'm getting, it's like coincidental that I'm getting my passport renewed because I feel like if I brought my old passport overseas to America where they interrogated the fuck out of me, I feel like they would look at the photo and be like, yeah, that's obviously not you. <laughs> anyway. I do that, and that was a win, right? Despite the the painful experience of talking to an Australia Post woman, it was a win, right? And then I go, okay, now uh, it's time for a swim, and I go for a swim, and I do a, and, and I do a lovely swim, and that was another win, and we love that. And then I've been thinking about getting a bike because I want my license, but it's going to take me four or five months probably to get up to speed. I'm texting my driving instructor today, actually. I wonder if he'll let me film it. I'm going to text him because he's an independent guy. He's not with a big business. I'm going to text the guy and he knows I'm a comedian. He, he, he likes what I do and he loves comedy. I'm going to go, can I just chuck a GoPro in there and we'll just film all the driver's lessons? Because you know what else? It, it, it Obviously, it'll be good content, but I feel like it might be the only thing that will keep me consistent and committed because you guys will be like, hey, man, it's been a week. Where's your driver's lesson? It's an idea. We'll see what he says. If he says no, he says no. But if he says yes, it might be fun. At least to film like one or two of them. It could be cool. Anyway, I do my swim. Love it. And and I've been thinking about getting a bike. So I go to, uh, there's a little local Frankston bike store next to the library. Lovely, amazing guy. Fucking legend. He told me he's uh, he's biked across 75 fucking countries. He taught me some some absurd, unbelievable number like of hundreds of thousands of kilometers traveled on bike. And uh, I went in and and uh, and he just he knew exactly what I was there for before I even said anything. And he goes, you want to see what bike is going to be big enough for you, do you? <laughs> and I was like, exactly. He, did, he didn't have a single bike that was big enough for me. He goes, look, mate, 
you're, he looked at me and he goes, you're almost certainly a double XL. And we don't really make those in Australia. That's more of an American thing, right? I imagine because there's enough black people that are so big that it justifies the risk of making a bike that big. I mean, how many people are my height in Australia? I never see them. But in America, I saw quite a few people that was between six foot six and, and seven feet, really. Uh, and it was like mostly black people and a few white giants. Um, maybe uh, Dutch people as well would have bikes that big because they're a big biking country and they're a big person country. But anyway, I go in there and I sit on, a, on an extra large bike and <clears throat> it was huge. Biggest bike I've ever seen in my life, I reckon. And uh, and it was, it was just too small. And he was like, look, I was like, oh, this feels good. And he goes, no, 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 do this, do this, do this. And I, you know, I extended my leg and I did these things. And he was like, this is going to be very uncomfortable for you after about 20 minutes. So it's probably not good. I'm like, okay, cool. And, and I go, well, where could I get uh, a bike? Cause I like this one. It was reasonably priced. Uh, and he goes, I'll just check if they make this one. They don't make this one a double in a double XL. And he goes, I have no idea where to send you. You can go to this one. They have 500 bikes. See if they have anything. Um, you're not going to find anything secondhand. Other than that, you could, you could maybe import one. I went, Oh, great. So he was really helpful. And if a normal person, sized person wants to buy a bike, go to the place next to Frankston Library. Legend. I'm just a genetic freak, so I can't reap the benefits of his excellent customer service. Such a contrast between Australia Post and him. So that was a bit of a fail. And then I'm like, oh, well, the library's closed. I just go to the beach and I do some writing. And I vlog this whole thing, by the way. You can watch it. And then, right, I... It's finally time for my appointment. It's about 6.20. I go, all right, cool. Let's go um, and get that sorted. Turns out I check up. I, it sends me the email. You're at this hospital. I go, bang. I know where that is. I'm going to walk there. I'm five minutes away. And I plug it into my map and guess what it says? Oh, oh it booked me at Moorabbin. Because I logged in to my fucking account, even though when I was a guest, I had selected the Frankston one and the fucking time and the fucking date because I logged in to an account that I made seven fucking years ago, it saved my preferences. And it goes, oh, your local clear ears clinic is in Moorabbin. And it booked me in at fucking Moorabbin and I didn't check because they were both at a hospital and I assumed that because I clicked on Frankston and the time and the date and then logged in, it would have saved that or at the very least asked me again where I want to go. But instead, it just saved me and reverted me to my clinic that I went to seven fucking years ago. And I wasted $140. And I got nothing and I'm fucking deaf and I can't hear shit. <clears throat> All because everywhere requires you to have a fucking account instead of just checking out as a guest. What, what is a guest anyway? I don't want to tell you my fucking name or where I live. I want to tell you where I want my appointment and then I'll tell you my name when I fucking get there. No refunds, by the way, because you prepay. So $140 down the fucking toilet. I got to pay for it again. Yeah. Woohoo. We love it. <sighs> Fucked. And that's where I'm going to leave it. That's the first episode of the year. Thank you very much for listening. There's going to be a, a, an episode, if you want to keep listening, up on Patreon right now, patreon.com slash Uh you, We get a Discord. We've got bonus episodes, early access to every video that I make, vol vlogs included. Uh, and yeah, man, it's, it's a banging community. There's heaps of people that have jumped on board recently. And why don't you start the new year? off uh in uh, in the patron supporting my comeback supporting the mission supporting uh the the journey uh back to building up momentum uh i am super excited for my tour which happens uh in january january 19 in perth is the first show i've got a bunch of shows in perth um 
We had to cancel the Sunday shows because the venue fucked up. So if you book tickets to Sunday, you're going to get reallocated another date. You'll be contacted. You don't have to do anything. Uh, or, well, you do. You have to tell your preferences, but they'll tell you what to do. You don't have to reach out to me, and I'm not even handling it. I don't know how it all works. Someone else is going to contact you. The Sunday shows got canceled. That kind of sucks, but it's not it's not anyone's fault. Well, it's the venue's fault. Happened to nine other comedians, which is really annoying. But uh, we still have a bunch of other shows, and it just means the other shows will be more packed, and it just means it's time to get your tickets now to because there's less tickets available now. That was like three shows that got canceled, I think, which is really annoying. But, you know, <clears throat> it, it is what it is. Grab your tickets. Loosespears.com. Uh, Perth in January. Then we have uh, Melbourne in uh, April. Uh, then we also have Sydney is on sale now and a bunch of others are going to be coming on sale, coming online very soon. I'm also revealing the poster um, as well, which I'm really excited about. And yeah, man, I really want to see you there. Grab your tickets, loosebeers.com um, and more cities, more dates announced soon. If you want to find out when I'm coming to you, loosebeers.com slash gig list, put your city in, put your email in and I'll send you a message when you're on, on when I'm on the way. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that is uh, the first of 52 episodes this year that I just recorded. I'm not going to miss a single one this year. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. I'll talk to you on Patreon. I'm Lewis Spears, and I hope you have a shit one. Bye.